Welcome back to the Pursuit of Accuracy. I'm Josh and today we're going to talk about leveling our scope and why that is so inherently important to downrange success when we are talking about shooting extended distances with precision rimfires. Now scope level or the scope setup is something that we all do but is often overlooked for the importance that it really has on the impact of our shooting. Now if we have a scope set up and we just slap some bubble levels on here and true that up, that may be pretty good and that may work out to 100, 150 yards just fine. The problem is if it's not perfectly level, when we're dialing out to those three and 400 yard distances, things can get out of whack very easy. So let's demonstrate that really quickly. Let's say that the side of this level here is the plane of our rifle reticle and that as we dial, this comes down on this plane. Now, if this is 100% level, then the windage from the top to the bottom is the same. The problem is if we just get this just a little out of level, we may not notice it as we dial down to maybe 90 or 100 yards. It may be inconsequentially off, maybe quarter inch left, quarter inch right. But as we get further and further down, we can see how big of a difference we have here to here in windage. And this really isn't very indicative of how bad this can actually get. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna put rounds on paper at 94 yards, and then we're gonna go stretch this out on some steel and we're gonna induce some cant. And we're gonna demonstrate just how bad that can be. All right, so let's get these rounds down range 94 yards. But the first couple here, we're just gonna put them straight on paper. We're gonna go middle row. Kind of middle target. All right, so eh, center to slightly off center. All right, we're going to add in cant, as you can see there. Now we're on the left edge of the target. Um, almost all the way off on the other target. Pretty, pretty significant. And so we're exaggerating this. We're all the way on the other side. Now, before we get into that, let's talk about the proper way to set this up. So there is one real method that I am gonna tell you that I trust, and that is go out to 100 yards, hang up a plumb bob, or put a blank piece of paper on a target board, and take your level and draw a level line or a crosshair on that target. What you're then gonna wanna do is get yourself on a nice solid platform, make sure your rifle is level, you can use a bubble level if you have an MV3 send it level, which we have a brand new product that I really wanna talk about from Brandt Built, we'll get into later. But we wanna use one of those to level up our chassis and then what we're gonna do is look at that target and we're gonna true our reticle to that plumb bob or to that level line that we have drawn. Now it's important here not to just cover that line you made up or the plumb line with your reticle. The best way to do this is to use the subtension hash marks on your reticle and just edge them up to that line that you drew. Once you start tightening up your ring caps for your mount or your ring set, you really wanna double check this as you go. Go to hand snug, check. Go to torque, check, because the scope can start to kind of cant with a little rotation as you tighten up those rings. So make sure you double check along the way. Now you may be thinking, well, my setup seems pretty good, and it may be, or it may not be. But let me ask you this, have you ever been at a match and you felt a three to four mile an hour left or right wind and went out and shot three or 400 yards and held just off the target, which would be about where you probably need to hold out there for that amount of wind, and shot and had the bullet go where you were aiming, or maybe even left of that, opposing the wind? Well. 
oftentimes we're going to tell ourselves, oh, there's an opposing wind or just a wind wasn't doing what I thought it would. Well, in reality, the wind is imparting movement on that projectile, whether we want to believe it or not. And if there is a left to right wind, the chances of you having an opposing wind coming from the other direction down a channel that's going to re-divert your bullet back on trajectory is slim to none. The more common thing is going to be that your scope is not trued up, that your reticle is not level. Because when your reticle is not level and you're dialing out all that distance, what you're doing is inducing windage into your hold. So you've dialed for 400 yards and now if you were in a windless environment, you would see your impact would be several inches off from where it should be and it's not due to wind, it's due to your setup. So if you're already using an MB3 send it level, there is a new product and it is called the Brant Built Ocular Housing Anti-Cant add-on and this is to be used in conjunction with your send it level that you already have. What it does is it replaces the housing, gives you DIY sets of fiber leads so that you can make it custom length to fit any optic or any configuration you want and mounts the optics onto your ocular housing. Now that's pretty killer for a couple of reasons. One, because this isn't a big corporation making this. This is a shooter who had an issue and solved it with a pretty ingenious method. So the great thing about the Senate level is it's electronic, it's very accurate, it's very easy to read, but it has to be mounted somewhere where you can see it. So most of us for right-handed shooters are gonna mount this on the left side of the optic on a 90 degree mount for a spur or whatever we're using, um, or maybe on the pick rail. And that works fine. You're basically looking at it with your non-dominant eye and Unfortunately, you have to break focus on your reticle for just a second, but it is very fast. Now, the problem is, is when you go to shoot a support side stage, now that send it level is not visible at all. So it becomes totally unusable. Well, this solves both those problems. It puts the LEDs on the rear of the ocular where your eye already is. It's going to work strong side or support side, and it's going to allow you to maintain your focus on your reticle and have that light right there. The other cool thing is you set it up yourself. So in my particular application, what you're seeing is I have it when the light is not green and the light comes on the right, I move my reticle or my cant opposite that. And it's very intuitive, it's very easy to get used to, and it's really quick. We'll show you more about that later, but for now, let's put this theory to the test. All right, so we're at the second location. What I'm doing is setting up the scope camera and we're gonna demonstrate some more of this cant, but at distance, instead of exaggerating it at 94 yards, we're gonna shoot 326.2 yards. So I'm gonna put a cider. I'm just gonna aim dead center of that far right plate, and we're gonna see what it does in the wind. You won't see it on the downrange camera. Okay, see so we're about half a mil high. All right, but it looked pretty much straight up. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna transition over to the big plate and that is where we have our X. So we're gonna aim dead center of the X and I'm gonna make sure that I am perfectly level. Okay, so we're level. We're gonna send three. Here low, but centered. Well, wind kicked up for that one, little left. All right, so we've got probably like a three or four inch group down there and we are just off center. So now what we're gonna do is we are just gonna camp this enough just to get it off level to where this indicates. And you can kind of see that in the crosshairs, how we're kind of dissecting that. So we're gonna send this. Wow. And uh, we are like half a mil or more, six tenths away from our last group. All right, we're gonna reverse that now. And I don't know why, but maybe it's because of spin drift, but right seems more significant. So we'll see it here. It did show up more significantly on our other test, but here we go, right camp. Wow. All right, 
so here's the target. I just wanted to come out here and give you guys a reference to how big this target is. But this is my first three shot group. We put left can in it and you can see how far away this group is. Right always seems exaggerated. We saw that at 94 yards. Um, the right just takes it way further. This is a hand and a half away. This is very obvious. So here, just for reference, you can see how big this target is and just how much can't means to your setup. So make sure you get that scope mounted perfectly level. Make sure you true that with whatever leveling device you're using on your rifle and make sure you can use it. I think from that, it is pretty obvious that a little bit of can't in your rifle setup and it makes it very easy to miss targets at range. You guys got a quick look at the Brent built anti can't device. And again, this is an add on for about a hundred bucks. You can transition it to the ocular piece of the scope here. You can be a heck of a lot more consistent. It's going to work strong side and weak side. And overall, I feel like it's just a really good innovative product. And again, we will have a standalone video on that, but thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. We'll catch you on the next one.